welcome to Come Home with Jen Mallon. You know, our whole life, we have been handed these things in malls and parking lots at grocery stores all over the place. Have you ever wondered where they came from? Well, today you're gonna to find out. I'd like to welcome my guest, Philip Buttram from the Gospel Track Society. Thank you so much for being here. Since I was a little girl, I've always wondered where those tracks came from. Now I know. Well, they come from the Lord to start with. We're just a vessel, a tool that will print his word and then publish it and ship it out. You mentioned that you currently have 900 pieces available in your, in your catalog? Yes, we have <gasps> over 900 titles in stock uh, that we carry on the shelves. And we can fill an order in a day for, of, of a new order. We print uh, uh, new titles, uh, two or three new titles every month. We have a monthly letter, newsletter goes out to our mailing list. And because life is changing, it's growing, God always gives us new material for, for the Christian community for witnessing, for salvation, and for growth. Tell us about how this organization started and what did it look like when it started up? We are very blessed to, to work and live in a family ministry. And it all started when my father, back in 1926, was, I'm sorry, God bless you. Uh, was studying for it to be a, a missionary in China uh, in a little Baptist church in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, he was at the altar, prostrate on the ground, crying for the Lord, a uh, very tender-hearted man. And uh, he heard the Lord call him and said, Lester, print my word. And let it, Dad said, what is it, Lester? Print my word. No, 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 God, I, I'm going to China. I'm going to China. Lester, print my word. But God, I don't know anything about printing. I'm studying to be a missionary. Lester, print my word and never charge for it, never sell it. That was the beginning of the ministry. And at that point, God had a calling. He knew what it was. The next day he went to the bank, withdrew his life savings of $7.10 and took a tract that he had to a local print shop and told the lady, the owner, uh, what God had told him and what he was going to do and gave the tract to the lady and the $7.10 and said, please print as many copies as you can of this tract for the $7.10. She was very moved by his passion and said, Lester, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll print what I can for $7.10, but I'll double the order and print the rest of it on my, my nickel. That was the start of, of GTS The Calling. Later, Dad began to send the tracks out to people he knew, to names of, of friends uh, that would give him names and addresses. And so it started one track at a time going across the United States. And he would write back. Some would not respond at all, uh, but some would write back and order more. Uh, and it, it became evident that this was going to be an on-time going ministry. And Grandpa, uh, of course, this is farm country. Grandpa cleaned out the back stall of the horses and put tar paper on the walls and set up a little little bench. And Dad was able to buy a, a hand-fed printing press. And he worked back there in the cold, hand-feeding the press. The money for the press came from a gentleman in Wyoming who had received a, a little note and a tract from my father. And so this, this gentleman, a, a cattle farmer, sent Dad a, a, a check for $100 which is back in 1926 was, you know, you're, you're wealthy with that kind of money. Grandma was not too happy with it. And he said, son, she said, son, this man made a mistake. Send the money back to him and apologize for taking the check. Dad didn't really want to, but being obedient, he sent the money back. A few days later, he got a steaming letter from the man in Wyoming and said, Lester, you didn't ask this money. God told me to send it, take it, use it to print gospel tracts. And that's how the ministry has been supported. Strictly free will offering. Uh, we, we don't sell anything. Uh, we, we don't like to suggest what it costs because it's not us, it's God. God supplies the, 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 the need and, and takes care of it. So that was the beginning of, of GTS, Gospel Track Society. So all of your materials, even to this day, are free, they're complimentary, they're available for those who want them and need them. 
how have you been able to stay afloat with the cost of production and sending things out and postage? The ministry is, is totally supported by, by gifts, by donations. Um, we have insurance, we have small staff. Uh, every time there's been a, a need for a large expenditure, um, God has always provided the money. It may take you know, weeks, months to, to do that, but we, we are a ministry that is debt free. Uh, you know, we, we pay our bills, uh, and uh, to me, that's part of the testimony of a Christian ministry is to not live flamboyantly with, you know, diamond pillars on the, on, the, on the walls, but to be functional, to do what God has called us to do strictly through the gifts of people. Uh, there have been many times there's been, a, there's been a need, financial need, and God was speaking on someone's heart. Uh, Dad was a prayer, Mom was a prayer, the, the whole family has been in prayer. God will speak to the heart of someone and they will be obedient to the, to, to the Lord and donate to the ministry. And that money goes directly to the cause of, of what God wants to do. You know, we don't have big bank accounts. We don't have, what we have is the blessings of God. Mm. It, it pays the bills and by not charging, uh, there's a freedom there. Um, and it allows us to, you know, to minister strictly to the word. Uh, we don't follow any, any denomination or any doctrine that's not Jesus Christ. Uh, we don't put in our own, own thoughts. It's all Jesus. You know, we don't hammer and nail. The Holy Spirit is gentle. He's a gentleman. And that reflects, is reflected in our attitude with uh, our subscribers and people who order. Some people order, don't give anything. That's fine. Uh, some people order, they give a donation. Other people give a donation and don't order anything. So it all bounces out. You know, God pays the bills and, and blesses us uh, with, with health and other, other blessings. You do realize that you are the poster boy for walking by faith. Walking in faith is, is more than just a, a, a cliche. Uh, I have learned and God has proven to me over, uh, over the years. I was, I was raised in ministry, you know, I, I saw faith. I, I saw how mom and dad, you know, would pray and how, how God would move. And, and when I went out the world, God still proved himself in my, uh, in my jobs. When I came back to, to the Gospel Tract Society, God has proved himself over and over and over again. One point, uh, one very strong point of, of God's move, uh, when I came back in, uh, in 2014, uh, we had one very large uh, ink, ink press. Uh, and it's a big deal to get all the plates on, ink it up, and, and print you know, several thousand copies. The, we would print less than you know, six to 10,000 copies of, of something. Well, if someone ordered a, a tract, a title, that was not on the shelves, we'd have to wait to run the, the, the tract on the press. And there'd be back orders that would be you know, four, six, maybe even eight weeks. And the Holy Spirit said, you know, this, this isn't right. We can't do this. So I was impressed on God to, to get a digital press. Well, digital press. I didn't know anything about pre digital presses. Over a period of months, I began to see that there was a particular press. Basically, it's like a large copy machine of high quality of what we should do. But it was, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. We don't have that kind of money. And I wasn't sharing with anybody, the staff or the family, what was going on between me and God. But I began to notice in probably August of this this year, that year, that the offerings were started increasing. And I'm, I'm looking at the the mail report, I said, God, what, what are you doing here? Well, the, the next month, September, God said, okay, I want you to get this press. God, God, we don't have the money. The funds continue to increase. No one large donation, you know, $5, $10, $20, but they were, they were gifts. They were children of God being obedient to what the Spirit told them. In January the next year, 2015, we were able to buy this digital press, $56,000, and pay cash for it. We were not strapped with a, the monthly lease payments of $700. I did, not, I did not want to tie the ministry to an obligation for eternity of you know, $700, $800. It, prices always increases. That press has allowed us to have everything in stock. If someone calls and says, hey, I need this one uh, for child ministry or whatever, but I need 1,000 copies. If we don't have it on the shelf, it's shipped out that day. 
not, not to our glory, not to our, oh man, look what they can do. No, no. God saw the need and he put it in place. You know, he saw it was down the track and said, okay, we're going to meet this need, but it's going to take me several months to get there. That's all right. God may be a God of today, but he also knows what's going on tomorrow. So this is a statement for you that God is not only your provider, but he's also your business manager. My God knows everything. I, um, when, when God called me to, back to, to the ministry, um, I, it was January 2nd, I sat in front of the staff, small staff of four. I said, okay, I don't know the financial situation, but I know that we don't have much money. We're either going to bury this ministry with respect and decency and dignity in our to God, or God's going to move and make things happen. God has allowed us to consolidate um, such as utilities. We had two buildings that were, that were built together. So, you know, God showed me that I could cut costs doing this. I could cut costs, you know, by, by combining the utilities from two gas meters to one gas meter. Small things. But over the period of a few months, the, the overhead was, was drastically cut, but maybe 40%. Well, at the same time, God's working over here, you know, with, with material, with the, the tracks, with people. So he knows what we need financially. He knows what we need physically, mentally, spiritually. And he supplies that need and he, he, he builds us, maybe not tell us where we're gonna go, but he'll, he'll get us there. So tell us where does all of the inspiration come for, for all the creative material? Huh. I tell you, the, the Lord is, the Lord made the universe. He knows the needs of the people. And I decided that anything that came out of the office while I was there was not going to be of me. I mean, I know what I can do. <laughs> it's not that much. I don't claim to be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I do claim to know who, ho who holds the drawer handle. And there are times that, that I will be praying for, and I pray for, for everything that we print, every letter that I write. There'll be times I'll be writing the, reading the word and something will pop out like, okay, I've read that a thousand times, but this really stand out. Lord, what do you want to do? And I will dwell on that after I finish my reading. I do some research, some more Bible scriptures, and God will put together the thought or theme. Sometimes, and very dy dynamically, I'll be driving to the office, praying about the next letter, and God will drop a phrase in my mind like, oh, okay, God, what are we going to do with that? Shh, it's all quiet. Okay, God. So I'll go, I will do my research, my due diligence on what he started with. But when it comes time to write it, I can sit down and maybe write the first sentence, and then the Holy Spirit begins to talk to me, and I'll, I will finish it in the Word, in the Scriptures. You know, God gives me... It, I am nothing special. Okay? I'm just a vessel that humbles himself before the Lord. Say, God, give me your word, not mine. If it's bad, okay, my words. If it's good, it's my, hope, my Father and Holy Spirit. So we're talking about, you know, how this all comes together. And it's clear that you have given God your five senses to work through, your keyboard to walk through, to use for his glory. So he's using, but it all comes through you. Me, the material, most of the new material does flow through me. We do have people that will submit material. Um, and when it's, when it's holy, when it's, when it's right time-wise and, and right for the, the environment we're in socially or whatever, you know, a hot topic, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to anything that God gives me. We have had people come in with a dynamic message, you know, God give message, but they'll say, hey, you know, Phil, it's gotta be this way God has given to me, it's got to be this way exactly, and don't change a word. Well, maybe it's not grammatically correct, maybe there's, the scriptures are wrong. You know, if, if there's not flexibility to present God's word uh, correctly in the spirit, in the anointing, then I'd say, thanks, no, we can't do that. But most material, and that has, has come to us or, or through us is, is God anointed. And sometimes when I'll reprint a, an older tract that is maybe, you know, back to, to the 40s or 50s, it needs to be freshened up. Okay, God, 
what do we want to change verbally or graphically that appeals to, to your children today or to a lost person today? Uh, if, if you're witnessing to somebody on the street or a neighbor or even family, you have maybe five seconds to get their attention. If what they see is a turnoff, you know, it's printed on newsprint with, you know, ugly, you've lost them. You don't, your testimony is, is, it falls to the ground. If you can get their attention, then the Holy Spirit can get a little closer. If you can give it to, to them and they'll take it, whether they read it then or not, doesn't matter, the seed is planted. So the, the, the entire objective of our ministry is to print the seeds that will be read, kept, or uh, planted by workers in the field. So you brought many uh, pieces and lots of material and m much of it is modern, but how, how has it progressed from where your father started doing it in the 20s to now in 2023? Well, my, <clears throat> my, my burden for the Lord is, like I said, to get materials that are, that are attractive. Uh, we have, uh, there's some of the, the older materials that were printed in the, in the, the 30s and 40s that are still powerful messages. And a, and a, a gospel tract is nothing more than a, a mini sermon. You know, and a person can read it in, you know, sometimes, you know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or maybe a little deeper, it takes them a couple of minutes to get into it. But it's, it's got to be attractive. So we have had several people who, uh, a wonderful artist, uh, we've got this one lady in uh, Indiana, uh, she loves God, she's, she's an artist. She's made several uh, coloring books, activity books um, for, for kids, for Bible schools, for street ministries. Uh, I carry some with me. When I go to the barber shop or gas station, if I see a, a parent and a young child, I often go say, hey, uh, do, you mind if, do you mind if I, if I give your child this? And I've never had anyone say, no, don't give the kid both. Because that means that a child's gonna be active and not bothering mom and dad. So they're gonna be playing with the, with the book. It's God's, God's message. And God has given us so many different tools. This, this is a comic book, a four color, 48 page comic book. We have it in six different languages. It has gone all over the world. It presents the story of Jesus Christ from birth to death to resurrection. People have been saved by just the photograph, the artwork, uh, dynamic artwork that uh, is sometimes brutal, but it all gives the story of Jesus Christ. And God uses things to get the, the attention of the soul, of the spirit of a person. Is there a particular scripture from the Word of God that appears on everything that you create? When I came back to GTS at Gospel Track Society, I realized that, that over the years that I was, I was gone, not that I'm the, the great proofreader, but <clears throat> excuse me, we had um, one, one president at one time was a, another uh, denomination that some people call a cult. And unbeknownst to my family, he would uh, sneak in verses and paragraphs that were against Christianity and leaned towards the cult. And God showed me that, okay, you know, go through these. So I told the, the, the pressman, said nothing gets printed without a, my review. Again, not that I'm so perfect and in, in, uh, uh, great in, in proofreading, but God began to show me what needed to be taken out. So in doing so, I saw that tracks that were aimed at salvation. Let me talk about the wonderful benefits of salvation but not give a clue of how to get there. Well, if it's something that you hand out to a person on the street and don't talk to them, and they, they read it, a, a text it, oh, wow, that's, that's good, I probably need to do that. How, how do I do that? Fred, Fred, how do I do this? So every track that is, is a salvation track will have at least Romans 10, 9. Now, if the track is, is format, I may have more scriptures in it, but if it's a full piece of material, I will, I will at least get Romans 10, 9 at the very end, the very seed that the Holy Spirit can work with. If they will read that, they can be saved, at least that much. Philip, will you please proclaim Romans 10, 9 for us? Oh, basically, it's, it's the truth of God. If you will believe in your heart and speak with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, came from heaven, was Son of God, died on the cross, was raised again, you shall be saved. 
You have lived a fascinating life. You've done so many um, extraordinary things. Tell us a little bit about the life of Philip Buttram. My life has been, um, it's been a walk of God. God has opened so many doors. I was a middle child. I had three older brothers. When I was 12, my parents adopted three sisters, which were younger than me. So I was the middle kid. And being the middle kid, or well, particularly the boys, my older siblings, yeah, he's a kid. He doesn't know anything. Shoot. Well, I was raised in the, in the ministry, around the ministry. Um, but when it came time to uh, go about my life, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had open heart surgery when I was at the age of 10, very rare surgery. Um, but because of the, the rarity of the surgery, uh, when I graduated from high school, there was a gentleman that worked for the Missouri Rehab Associate, or, uh, Committee, and I got a scholarship, electronic scholarship. God used the scholarship to give me a degree in electronic engineering, which was paved the way for the rest of my life. It was through this degree that I actually met my wife. Um, her mother worked for the electronic, electronic company that I, I was working for. Uh, they had airplanes. I began to fly the airplanes, which was another avenue that God used. Later years, I became a, a pilot for Braniff and for Eastern. I was one of the chief pilots for GE, the third largest corporation in the world. God has given me different experiences, and all these experiences have been uh, foundation blocks for the ministry. Um, I, again, I, I know what I can and can't do. You put me into an airplane, and I'll fly out any place in the world. But you put me in some place where I have to talk about Jesus Christ, okay, that's deeper. That's Holy Spirit. Father, I need your help here. So that, that really has, I think, made me humble. Um, and I've, I've pursed myself to be humble before the Lord, to say, okay, God, use electronics, use the, the air conditioning, use everything that you've given me for your glory and for your word. You took over Gospel Tracks in 2014, right? I took, uh, God called me back to, in 2014. Dad passed away in the 90s. Mom was heartbroken and passed away two years later because she, her love for dad. Uh, my oldest brother, David, uh, directed the ministry for years. Uh, he died a diabetic. Uh, I had another brother die of diabetic diabetes. Uh, my third brother uh, took over the ministry. And then God told him uh, in 2013 to resign and offer the ministry to me. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the transition that uh, I came in 2014. And you stepped right into it and you owned it like it was always your calling. There were, there were times when I was, I would be traveling. Uh, take that, I mean, one time in, in Wichita, it was at a high rise hotel, a little, little overlooking the airport. And I can remember looking at this full, at this full length window and crying to work in the ministry, but I didn't know why. The call was there, but I didn't recognize that it was a call. Even when God opened the door for me to come back to the ministry in 2014, I didn't realize that it was a calling for that ministry until a couple of years later. And then I saw, oh, wait a minute, God called me 40 years ago. And it's taken 40 years of walking the pavements, of you know, flying here, doing this, whatever. And now, once I realized the calling, I said, okay, God, you put this together. What do you want to do with it? You know, I don't want it to be me. And I, I purposely, physically hold myself for Holy, Holy Spirit. I said, God, you know, if I'm not the guy, bring someone else in. It's your work, it's not my work. Make it happen. So we just have a very short time left, and I wanna give you the opportunity just to address our amazing viewers, partners, audience. Share whatever you want on faith, on, on how God is using you, and, and encourage. I'm sorry the time has gone so quick. Anytime you talk about God and the family, my call <clears throat> is just me. I'm not a preacher, I'm not an evangelist, I'm not a teacher. But yet God has called all of us to preach, to teach, to share his word. I'm held accountable for what God has called me to do. My rewards are based on what I do for him, for the kingdom. My salvation is locked down, but my rewards are not. We are all called, we all are called to preach, to teach. It may be our children, our grandchildren, our neighbor, share the word. You don't have to have a sermonette. 
You can give a comic book, a tract. If, you, some, if there's someone lonely, you can give them a tract of encouragement, just love. It's, it's, not, it's not really what we do in ourselves. It's what we do with leading to the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the gentle love, the showing a kindness, uh, opening the heart, being faithful to God. God may just give you a short, quick thought. Talk to that man. Oh, I don't want to. I, you know, he's got tattoos. He's, you know, no, no. We, we have a message for him. God has a message for him. It's a love message. It's up to us to be obedient to the word of God and listen to the Holy Spirit. In doing so, we will see the fruits of our labor when we die and go to heaven. Philip, will you tell people how to access your ministry, how they can find you and connect with you? We are, <clears throat> we're not a high-tech ministry, but we do have a web page. It's just our name, gospeltractsociety.org. You can call us, area code 816-461-6086. You can write us, Gospel Tract Society, P.O. Box 1118, Independence, Missouri, 640 Five two, correction five zero. Uh, call, write, uh, come by. We're we love God. We'd welcome you, Philip. I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to come down and be part of the program. And I really look forward to you coming back again. And we'll unpack more of your extraordinary Jesus stories. It's my blessing, first of all, to be with family, Christian family. It's my blessing to share the word of God. It's my blessing to, to be used of him to sow his seeds. Uh, God bless and keep you all. And I just wanna thank all of you for watching today. I love the privilege of coming into your home and sharing human beings that are living their faith. I know you're living your faith and I just wanna encourage you, keep praying for this station, for this show, Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for sending finances and gifts. They mean so much. And we cannot do what God's called us to do without help from people like you that are being obeying God and being faithful to Him. Join us tomorrow and join us for the rest of this week as we continue to just let the light of Jesus shine. I'm Jen Mallon and I'm asking you, come home. Want more Come Home? Keep the conversation going online by connecting with us on social media. Hear more from Jen, learn more about our guests, and connect with other viewers on Facebook and Instagram. Follow at Jen Mellon to find out more.